if you really, really like fishing like I do, you're not going to find a better atmosphere and a cooler vibe than you'll find at a tiny little place along the Texas Gulf Coast called Port Mansfield, Texas. Not a lot of bars and restaurants, nightlife and tourism, but if you like red fishing, speckled trout fishing and flounder fishing, you can't beat this place. Come on, I'm going to show it to you in the next half hour because this is Fox Sports Outdoors. It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors Sports South. The bay system at Port Mansfield is hundreds of thousands of surface acres of expansive shallow flats full of redfish and speckled trout and lots of guys going out doing a lot of wade fishing for those. But leave it to me to pick the most challenging thing in the entire bay system to target on this week's show. I'd like to go out and specifically target the flounder fishing here. It can be a real challenge and not many of the charter captains will do that but we found a guy who will target those flounder. His name is Steve Ellis, and he has lots of good spots where those flounder live. I'd like to have some to have him fillet, put in the freezer, and take back. Sounds like a lot of good eating to me. We're gonna be joined in the Mako 21 LTS saltwater skiff with our Mercury four stroke 150 outboard. Head up with Captain Steve Ellis, and while we're doing that, we're taking you around the region for your very latest fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters, get the reports on your local area. So let's get the Mako launched in the bay right now. While we're doing that, we take you back to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are fairly optimistic about fishing over the weekend. Saturday's conditions are listed as good, with peak time starting a bit after midnight and again during the day at 1.11 p.m. The sun will rise at 6.32 and set at 8.35. And if you like dark evenings for your night fishing trips, this is the weekend. We just had a new moon on Wednesday, so there will be very little moonlight. Stay with us, we have all of your fishing updates from around the region on the way. Plus, I'll return with Wally Marshall to offer some advice for crappie anglers on this week's Ask the Pro. Back in a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Buy, lose, setting a new standard of fishing performance. Feel the difference by Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. Hello. Oh, look at one chasing him. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. That's a good one, wasn't he? Here, hold it. Get him. He, he hit it. it. Yeah. Golly, isn't that incredible? We awesome, got two huh? of them. Spot cat. That's a nice fish right there. We got doubles right here. That was weird. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> that was plenty weird. He, Steve hooked a fish and reeled it all the way up to the boat, and it had two with it. And all I did was took my line and flipped it out there. Look, now flip him around here. Hold him around here where we, we can see. There's two nice trout right there, both nice keepers. And, uh, but I flipped in there and this fish was chasing that one around trying to get Steve's lure out of his mouth. And all I did was <laughs> flipped my little shrimp tail right in amongst them. And the better one, Got to give you credit, he had a wind knot in his line too. I, so I'm I, I had was a very wind good. knot in my line, I was trying to pick it out. I've still got the wind knot down in my reel. Wow, what a deal. All right, well, there is action going on here. We got trout working anyway. As promised, we've made it out with uh, Captain Steve Ellis today. He guides out of uh, Getaway Adventures Lodge, which is a beautiful place in Port Mansfield. I'll tell you more about that just in a little bit. But uh, Steve, let's talk a little bit about the day here. Uh, We've run up to the land cut, which is a really famous landmark. This is the land cut, and it is a land cut. It moves uh, between uh, the Corpus Christi area, Baffin Bay, and Redfish Bay, Port Mansfield Bay here. This is a, a really good place to fish because it's the only place the fish can traffic from the northern bays into our southern bay systems. 
very, very good place to ambush fish along here. It can be absolutely awesome in this thing at times. You want the presence of bait. What I've already learned about this deal is you want to have little uh, glass minnows and uh, mud minnows and all kinds. You want to have activity on the surface. If there's activity up in that shallow water, most likely there are fish. We'll see what else happens. We're going to start off now and get you some fishing reports from your backyard. Stormer USA has designed their logo to be a shield, which by definition is something that protects. And that's exactly what their product line is designed to do. No matter where you live or what the climate, they design a product that will protect you and your investment of your time outdoors. So go to StormerUSA.com today and check them out. Hey guys, welcome this week's Tennessee and Kentucky Fishing Report. You know, uh, what we're dealing with right now in this region is high water, and uh, that's residual from all the rain we've had the past few weeks. The deal about Tennessee and Kentucky, though, is during the summertime, we're primarily an offshore fishery. In times of high water, that kind of slows that down a little bit. But there is a uh, great window of opportunity if you like to fish shallow, because this high water has really opened up a lot of fishing uh, around the bank and around some shallower cover. Um, we've had a mayfly hatch in the last week or two, which combined with this high water has just got the, uh, the shoreline food chain just in full swing. Uh, so uh, panfish, bass, catfish around shoreline cover right now is, is probably your best bet throughout this region. Um, the, the night fishing is slowed down a little bit also with the, with the high water perhaps. And the only reason I say that is with high water comes a bunch of stuff floating. Otherwise, the water's gonna fall and when the water falls, the bass fishing goes crazy, as does the catfishing uh, because of the current that's created. So uh, get around the bank, shallow wood, shallow rocks, uh, shallow trees. And if you come as the water starts falling, it's, it's all current, it's all offshore and it's all good. We'd love to see you on the water in Tennessee and Kentucky. God bless. Got him? Yeah, I got one. There he is, flounder. flounder. Oh God, net, 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 net. Good one? Yeah, good one. Come on, calm down. You gonna get a netting like for me? Him. Yeah, I got him. Okay. All right, here we go. That's what I wanted to eat and take home right there. How about that? Oh, that's respectable too. Give me a flounder. Hey, welcome back everybody. We're out of Port Man's Field up in the land cut and we have caught one of what I wanted to catch today. There, target species. Target species right there. That's a nice flounder on my little lead jig head. And he's I got wrapped up there. All right, we're with uh, Captain Steve Ellison. Steve, talk about the flounder fishery here. What's it doing? And can you actually come out and target specifically these, these species and how do you do it? You have to fish where they live. They like channel banks, any edges, soft bottoms, drop offs, pretty much a channel fish. They, they want some kind of structure along deep water with shallow water access. So they're not gonna be up on the flat so much, they're gonna be on the drop on the where drop, it drops off. On the, any kind of a transition, especially a slow transition. Now and, also these shacks along here, the, yeah. the shacks that people can, can lease for the whole year and they come out here and spend the night. Mm -hmm. You said they get around the piers of those docks? They like the pilings, once again, structure. And what time of the year is prime for them? Uh, generally in the summer is really good and then they run out of the north northern bay systems in the fall. They literally run out of the bay and do whatever they do out there, and then they come back in in the summer months. So okay. there should be some more around. Come catch you some of these right there. We got us a flounder right there. Let's get you some more fishing and lake reports. How about that? Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolina's report. This week brought to you by Marshall's Marine, located in Lake City in Georgetown, South Carolina. We're your bass boat leader since 1969, and for all your nitro and bass tracker needs, visit www.marshallsmarine.com. Well, I tell you what, I get out and enjoy the CCA program throughout the year, but in the summertime, their Top Water Action Program, along with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources SCORE program, are rebuilding all of our estuaries through recycling oysters to promote oyster larvae growth. See if you can get on the CCASC website, find out more information on a program that's coming near to you, get out and volunteer, and help build that habitat that we all love getting out to enjoy. And speaking of that habitat, the flounder bites have been incredible. All through the Carolinas, we're catching some nice fish in the inlets. Get out and fish slow with some good live bait or some artificials, and you will have a great day fishing in the backwaters. Also on the reefs, the mackerel are still there, and the sharks are there. If you're looking to get a shark after watching Shark Week last week, 
get out and enjoy a great fight with one of these incredible animals that make our reefs home during the summertime. Also in the freshwater side of things, Captain Stevie Pack over at Pax Landing said this has been one of the most incredible summers he's had up there as far as catfish, shellcracker, and brim. He's fishing in the swamps back around Sparkleberry and having some great trips still into the summertime. I'm going to join Captain Jason Bennett of Jason Bennett's Guide Service on Lake Murray this week to do some nighttime fishing for stripers. He says that that cooler temperature at night is sending these fish into a feeding frenzy and he's having some great trips of 30, 40, 50 fish in a couple hours getting out and enjoying that cooler time of the day. Oh, that's a good one, that's a good one. That's a good oh, one. that's a good flounder right there. Look at that, let me get the net. Fight him in here, baby. Coming Come on, you. Steve. Coming at you, coming at Come you. On, he's a Steve. good one. Got him, yes. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. that oh, oh, that's a good <laughs> one. Look at that big daddy. Boy, he ate your lure. That's a good thing. All the way down in his mouth. It. These are gorgeous flounder, good size flounder, perfect eating size fish. And, and you said that's this a is nice a good flounder yeah, for this day, right? Or for that's this, uh, for this. That's dinner for four. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, we're with Steve Ellis. And uh, while we're undoing this flounder right here, this is going to take a minute. I want to mention something. I told you that we were fishing out of Getaway Adventures Lodge down at Port Mansfield. What a gorgeous place. Mike Sutton and his crew have done a tremendous job remodeling this lodge. They can do groups, got great places to lounge around inside and eat. They can accommodate up to 26 people in a group or as few as just a couple. Give them a call, catch you some nice flounder like this and some speckled trout and some redfish and maybe get lucky and catch a snook. Hey, we're gonna be right back to Port Mansfield to the land cut right after this. Don't go anywhere. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Introducing the XI-5 for ultimate boat control. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Yep, 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 yep. You got him? Yeah, I'm sure that's another flounder. It's got to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. They don't fight until they get in the net. No. <laughs> and then look at that. Hey, look, just because you got that. him in the boat doesn't mean you're going to keep him either. Yeah, oh, look, that's a nice look one, at too. These, look at this fish. Let me get in there. Okay. There we go. Now we got him. All right, there's a nice flounder for you right there. Way to go, Steve. Thank you. That's, that's awesome. We got some beautiful flounder working in here. We're fishing just an edge, a drop edge out here, as we mentioned. And these flounder really seem to be here. We've, we've stuck three or four nice yeah. ones in a row yeah. right here. And so, uh, Steve, when you come out here and fish like this, you're actually fishing this edge, but you could catch anything right here, right? Oh, what, absolutely. What, what, what all are you eligible to catch when you throw on this little channel edge we're fishing right here? You, you can catch trout and redfish on the drop-off side and flounder right at the edge of the grass line and the sand lines. Works out really good like that. Uh, many times you'll see redfish like coming off of this flat looking for this ditch to go into, you know, and you can spot cast them coming off the flats. It, it can happen very regularly. Wow. And we've got our Mako boat out here. We've got power poles on the back of it and got the Motor Guide XI-5 Wi-Fi trolling motor on the front. So we have got full control of the boat. We can stop ourselves. If we catch a couple in an area, you want to stop, fish that area thoroughly because there's obviously something going on there. We've caught three or four nice flounder in this one spot within about 20, 30 yards right here. So we're going to pull back up there, probably put the anchor feature on the Wi-Fi trolling motor and just hold ourselves in one spot. All right, it's time for more fishing reports from you. Let's find out what's happening right there in your backyard. This part of the program is brought to you by Georgia Charter Fishing on St. Simons Island. If you're looking for a family fishing trip, well, you're after a world record redfish, giant tarpon, or big sheep's head. Captain Greg Hildreth will make your fishing trip one to remember. Well, Shark Week is still underway along the coast of Georgia. Uh, black tip spinners and some black nose sharks have really shown up in a big way all behind the shrimp boats all along the coast of Georgia. Almost anywhere you find uh, shrimp boats trawling, you can find uh, really large sharks and they're readily available to be caught uh, using a live bait, dead weight. You just chum a little bit behind the, the shrimp boats and uh, you're gonna hook up to sharks. Uh, the good captains, uh, like Tim Cutting down uh, on St. Simons Island, uh, they prefer to use heavy monofilament, 300 pound monofilament, uh, rather than wire, because when they get a shark up close, they can just cut that monofilament with a pair of cutters, rather than trying to unhook the shark with, if they use a wire leader. 
Uh, if you're going to do it that way, which is a, a recommended way to do it, uh, use bronze hooks so eventually the hook will uh, rust out of the fish's mouth and you don't hurt the shark. The near shore uh, uh, reefs and wrecks are holding uh, big jacks, uh, barracuda, king mackerel, and some spade, plenty of spade fish. Uh, Captain Sonny Schindler over in uh, Bay St. Louis is doing real well with mixed bag catches of trout, redfish, and triple tail. Uh, he's fishing primarily around the Louisiana marsh, but uh, even right there around Bay St. Louis, uh, early morning fishing also can be real good for uh, spotted sea trout uh, using popping corks and live shrimp. Over in Alabama, there's redfish everywhere in Lower Mobile Bay. Well, that's it for the coastal south. Get out on the water, and when you go, take a youngster with you, please. Thanks for joining us for this week's Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi freshwater fishing update. This report is sponsored by Jimmy Jacobs Outdoor Adventures, your source for guidebooks on hiking or trout and saltwater fishing in the region. www.jimmyjacobsoutdoors.com we're now in the summer vacation season, and for most of us, that means taking the family on a getaway to the Atlantic or Gulf beaches. Fortunately, there are waters near these shores in Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi that hold bass fishing as well. In Georgia, a good option is Pomona Lake in Liberty County, just to the east of the town of Hinesville and south of Blackbeard Creek. This 100-acre pond is the largest public fishing lake in the Peach State's coastal region. Now it's shallow, it's lined with marsh grasses, and it has some fishing docks along the southern shore. It's noted for giving up some big large mouths. The biggest of these fish was pushing 15 pounds. If you get a hookup or the fish, get it in as quickly as possible. As is true in most coastal areas, you're not alone on the water. The alligators are of all sizes and they're attracted to that thrashing fish. Similar actions available on Alabama's Lake Shelby and Gulf State Park between Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. This is a complex of three ponds that are lined with marsh grass and it holds largemouth bass but it's also got some saltwater species in it. The best place to fish in the open water is around the 100 Christmas trees that they have anchored out in the middle of the lake. On the Mississippi coast, try the Pascagoula River for some largemouth action this week. You want to be fishing the main channel or the Oxbow Lakes off of it and target that woody cover. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. By Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. By Mercury Marine, official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, Dominic. Welcome back everyone. It's time now for the Ask the Pro question. Your chance for advice from professional anglers. This week Colby wants to know, how deep should I place my light when night fishing for crappie? For the answer we checked with professional crappie angler Wally Marshall. It really doesn't matter how deep your light's down in the water when you're doing night fishing because all you're trying to do is draw the bait fish to you. The crappies will not get directly in the light. I'm doing a night show this year, so I'll tell you what, throw out your blighted bobber on, out in the dark area and reel it right up to the edge or the aura of the light. The crappies stay in the dark, the bait fish are darting through the light, and they're back in the dark section off of that light waiting to strike. It doesn't matter how deep your light is in the water. Thank you, Wally. If you have a question to ask one of the pros, Go to our website, follow the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. Now let's find out which big fish photo wins someone a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. Well, as you can see now, we've made it back to the fantastic Getaway Adventures Lodge, situated right on the harbor in Port Mansfield, Texas. As you can see, this is a wonderful place, and I'll give you the information on how you can come here in just a moment. But first, it's my pleasure right now, as it is each week, to give away a free pair of Costa sunglasses to this week's winner of the Costa Catch of the Week contest. He is Rick Mayberry of Harriman, Tennessee, showing off a 32 pound striped bass he caught at Watts Bar Lake in Tennessee. If you'd like to have a chance to be our next winner, you can do that by going to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com and on the right side of the front page, clicking on the Costa Catch of the Week box, following the instructions you'll find there. 
you could win a free pair of Costa sunglasses like our winners did this week. And you can see all of the great Costa products by going back to the front page of our website and clicking on the Costa logo. There you can see all of the frame and lens styles, like the frame style that I was wearing on this week's episode called Cabalito. On the Academy Right Stuff feature, I wanna talk about the gear that you'll need, particularly the baits to catch fish here at Port Mansfield. You'll see lots of people using live croaker and mullet and shrimp here. You do not have to use live bait to catch fish here at Port Mansfield. We caught tons of fish today on artificials, many that we didn't have time to show you on camera. You can use topwater baits, hard bodied swim baits, plastic shrimp imitations or swim baits on a lead jig head. They'll all catch fish here. You don't need to use live bait. And the vast majority of the people wade fish here. They pull up on these shallow bars and shallow flats stake their boat down, get out and do lots of wade fishing. You can do that if you'd like. Al Sharpton is a longtime civil rights activist and White House advisor. He's got some very polarizing opinions. And while I disagree with a lot of what Al has to say, one thing that he said I do agree with is this. The only thing that will matter two minutes after you die is what you did for others. You know, we live in a very selfish culture. It's all about me and my needs and what everybody else can do for me. But the truth of the matter is, after you're gone, the things that will remain are the time you give, the energy you spend, the money you donate, and anything you do for someone else. Those things will outlive you by 10, 50, even 100 years. Think about that. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our great trip here to Port Mansfield, Texas. I can promise you I'll be back and I'll be back to this place behind me. Getaway Adventures Lodge is everything you could possibly want in a fantastic lodge. They've got great room accommodations, great food, pool, beautiful landscaping, dock facility, fishing guides that'll take you right out of the docks here. Literally, it's all inclusive, everything you could possibly want, and you're looking at the telephone number and the web address if you'd like to learn more about your own stay at Getaway Adventures Lodge. And Steve Ellis was our guide on this trip, and if you'd like to book Steve, you can either do that through the lodge or we'll throw his telephone number directly up on the screen as well. Hey, don't forget, we'll be back on next Thursday in our regular time slot at 6 p.m with the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8.30. And you can always watch the latest episode of our show right on the front page of our website, foxsportsoutdoors.com. You can catch up on all of our past episodes by clicking on past episodes and more video here. You can also see lots of how-to and product videos there as well. And don't forget to follow us on our Twitter feed. We're always giving away free fishing gear there and you'll see lots of photos, video, and fishing news you'll never see here on the television show and like us on our Facebook page as well. From gorgeous Port Mansfield, Texas in the Getaway Adventures Lodge, we'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs>